Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use the iPad to make composite images. It's basically using an image that already exists and putting another image into it. It's also called a mock-up and it's often used in presentations for clients. For example, if you are using this image, you can use it to show your client what the iPhone UI looks like. I work as an art director and designer and I also use them very often. And usually, Mac and PCs are used to make something like this, but today I'm going to show you how to make one using iPad. Alright, today we are using an app called RStudio Pro. About this app, it's pretty much the same as Photoshop. The functions and the visualizations are almost the same as Photoshop, except the language of this app is only available in English. If you are used to using Photoshop, you should be able to get a grip of it really quickly. There's been news that Photoshop for iPad will be released soon, but you can use this if you can't wait. It costs about $15. So start up RStudio Pro. I use it really often, so it's on my dock. And it looks like this first, so start off by tapping the plus button on the top right. This time, tap New from Photos to import a photo. Then you can import a photo from the camera roll. So this time, we are going to use a photo of a person holding an iPhone. Let me explain the tools. The layers are on the top right panel. You can tap the plus button to add layers. The panel on the left is a toolbar. Your brushes and erasers are there. The menu bar is on the top. You can import images and adjust colors here. On the bottom left is the back button. On the top left is a full screen toggle. You can just try them out and see what they do. Okay, let's get started. First, lock the layer by tapping the gear icon and tap lock position. Then, add a layer on top of that. We are going to place another image on top of it on the screen. How we do it is, tap the layer menu on the menu bar and tap add. Then, tap add layer from photo. That will bring up the camera roll. I will import a screenshot I took on my iPhone beforehand. I took a screenshot like this on my iPhone. I tapped the share button and then sent it to my iPad. Sorry, it's cut from the screen. Just like this, the photo is then imported to RStudio Pearl. A new layer has been added. We need to make the photo fit to the screen. So adjust the screenshot of photo by tapping the edit menu tab and tapping transform. You can transform the photo freely now. Drag and drop the edges to change the size. The undo and redo buttons are on the right. The undo button is to go back and the redo button is to move forward. And this spin button allows you to rotate clockwise and counterclockwise. The arrow keys allow you to adjust by pixel. There's also a button called Aspect Ratio. 
If you toggle it on, the ratios will be locked. If you unlock it, it won't be locked. I think it's better if you always keep it on. And I adjust it like this. And here is a mode button. Scale is on for now. Toggle the free button on to adjust the edge. You can stretch it freely now. Pull the edges and make sure they align to the iPhone. You can't see the hand area, so use your imagination. When you're done, tap Done. The menu will return. From here, I'm going to dull the edges. By the way, if you tap with two fingers, it will undo. Tapping with three fingers will redo. In order to round the edges, you're going to need the masking feature. Tap the plus button and tap add mask. Then tap review all. After that, use the black brush and fill in the unnecessary parts. There is no way for you to know when to stop if you just use the black brush on its own, so increase the transparency of the screenshot. That will show you the base layer making it easier to color. Once you do that, select the mask layer and use the black brush to color the edges. Sorry my hair is in the camera. I'm using black, but if you use white, the picture will come back. So make sure you use the mask and do not use the eraser. That way you can edit it later. And use a soft brush on the hands to make it look better. Using a mouse on a computer is a hassle. But the Apple Pencil is very intuitive when masking, so it's really good. Then adjust the opacity to 100%. You're almost done! Finally, adjust the image. Then adjust the color and the overall tone balance. Make another layer on the top by tapping the plus button on the bottom left. Then, tap gradation fill on the left side. You will be able to make gradation like this. What we are going to do is that we are going to make light in the picture using this. The light is coming in like this, so we are going to use the clipping mask. Tap the gear icon and tap the enable clipping mask on the bottom to add the gradation on the bottom layer only. Next, change the gradation mode from normal to soft light this time.
This way, the lining in the picture will change. Use the opacity to further adjust. This is good enough already, but I want to add shadows and highlights. Lastly, add a filter on the top. When making a composite image, adding a layer on the top will make the two different color tones complement each other. So you should definitely use it at last. Then, tap the gradation map. I'm going to add a brown gradation filter this time. Adjust the colors here. I want to tighten the shadow colors, so I'm going with dark brown. Changing the gradation mode to soft light or overlay will tighten the tone colors. Adjust the opacity, and I'm done! This is a sample of how to make composite images using the iPad. It can be done in around 10 minutes, so you can even make one on the go. Finally, I just want to tell you how to export your creation before I end this video. So tap export from the menu bar. That will bring up options like ping, JPEG, TIFF, PSD for your Photoshop, PDF, and even the RStudio profile format. I use a JPEG format. Tap next. You can save the image or even share it to other apps. I use AirDrop and send it to my iPhone. iPhones are convenient for sending emails, so I'm going to save it and send the email later. That's all for today. I'll introduce some other ways using RStudio Pro to make composite images and layouts in the upcoming videos, so feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye bye!